Gaming is bigger than ever, and this year in particular has been banger after banger after banger when it comes to video games. AAA juggernauts like Spider-Man 2, Starfield, RE4 Remake, you just expect to come out and have such a good time with. But every year there's those games that come out of left field that shock and surprise you in the best way. I'm talking the first Plague Tale, Vampire Survivors, It Takes Two, Neon White, Evil West and loads more. A combination of double-A and indie games that left a lasting impression. This year's surprise hit to me is Remnant 2. I never got round to checking out the first game and I heard this was going to take everything from the first and refine it while giving it more production value. It was pitched to me as a looter shooter souls like. I'm a big looter guy. I have hundreds if not thousands of hours in Destiny 2. Played Diablo 4, Avengers, hell, I even loved Anthem. I'm interested in Souls likes, I beat Bloodborne, Elden Ring and Sekiro. The blend of these genres into one game just it didn't quite fit right in my head but I was wrong. It is a perfect mashup. If I was to be simplistic I'd pitch this as Destiny meets Bloodborne meets Control. But I don't think that's fair on Gunfire Games to simplify it down like that. What they've created here is their own vision, worlds and experience. Most of all, I love a video game that rewards you for the time that you put into it. No fluff, it simply respects your time. I rolled credits on Remnant after 16 hours, but there is endless replayability there if you want it to. I really think that this should be put on a podium for how games can be without the live service model, without bullshit microtransactions and without battle passes. Because what you get in return is word of mouth. And just look at what it's done, peaking at over 100,000 players on Steam, sitting comfortably in the top 10 and showing no signs of slowing down. Remnant 2 is easily one of the best things I've played this year, and something I will continue to do so, even after rolling credits. So, the basis of this game is that you can play solo or up to two other friends online. Immediately, what was so cool to me was that not everybody has the same journey, same stories. Myself and two other friends all had different starting worlds and hearing about their worlds had me excited to eventually get to them. Remnant 2 features 5 worlds, 3 of which can be re-rolled because in one playthrough of each world you won't see everything in which that world has to offer, different dungeons, but that doesn't ever make you feel like you're truly missing out on, it just adds more for people who really love the game. These worlds are so visually striking, one that feels like Bloodborne a shut down space prison and more that I won't spoil here. They're so different from one another and yet still feel part of the same universe. It's dungeons. Oh boy, some of these dungeons are top tier man. They're not like mechanic heavy in a destiny way, more akin to something from a FromSoft dungeon, but the variety in them is fantastic and some of them they blew me away. From time trials to hordes to just bosses, to puzzles for you to solve. Brilliant, really, really great. The story of this game, look, it's, it's not quite gonna move you or resonate with you or blow you away, but it's a good vehicle to get you from the start of the game to the end, and there is plenty of lore and side quests if you want it and look for it. So, after exploring and making your way through a world and its dungeons, you'll encounter a world boss, after defeating that world boss, you'll be granted the option to re-roll that world if you'd like to see its other dungeons and areas, but if you want to gather more materials and find more items, or simply carry on with the main quest and come back to that world later on, you have the choice. I did every dungeon bar one in my main playthrough, and now that I've beat the game, I intend to go back and do some more of these secret side quests and find these secret archetypes. Talking of archetypes, these are essentially your class. I went with the Gunslinger which as you imagine is more DPS heavy based class with its abilities and its perks and it was a lot of fun. You can get some really brilliant synergy when playing with others and their archetypes. There's a lot of archetypes to choose from, you're not gated to any weapons or anything like that, just abilities and trait boosts so as I leveled up my Gunslinger for example, I intrinsically gained more ammo reserves. You've got your basic long distance hunter, your medics, the handler which is a cool, gives you a good boy to roam around with which is helpful as a solo player. And what's even cooler is you can adopt dual archetypes, allowing you to equip a second one at the same time 
which I did. I got the handler alongside my gunslinger, so I had a good boy running around with me. With Since the majority of the time I was solo, really helpful and helped me out a ton. There's also depth to each archetype, so you get some passive buffs, but then you can choose an active skill to have one of three, which has nice variety and all of their own unique benefits. Of course, it wouldn't be much of a loot a shooter without loot, and the loot does not disappoint. Your starting archetype will determine your starting armor, long gun, and handgun, but after that, it's up to you. It's not quite a normal loot a shooter where you're picking weapons off the ground every two minutes with plus two damage. And that's a refreshing change. In fact, by the end of my playthrough, I only had four long guns, three hand cannons, and five melee weapons. Loot can be purchased from the weapons vendor, but can also be crafted, particularly boss weapons. Upon killing a world boss, you'll receive material unique to that boss that you just killed, and can then craft a weapon based upon that boss. There's some really cool design weapons from this, with their own unique mods and perks that can change up entirely how you play. There's also the weapon mod system that can add elemental effects to your weapons, and then mutators which can provide even further benefit. These are all crafted back at Ward 13, which is your hub area for materials, weapon crafting, medical supplies, etc, etc. I didn't care much for any of the characters here, but never really spent much time with them either. They serve the purpose that they need to. The hub is just what it needs to be. All areas close to each other so I'm not walking for ages between the vendors. Just simple design that's effective. They know that you want to be in and out of there and back to the option as soon as possible. I really appreciated the looter aspect of this game though. No mucking about, no rarity system, just simple to understand and plenty of variety to fit your playstyle. Not picking up a new weapon every two minutes for two extra hit points or some shit. I haven't spoken much about the Souls-like elements. This feels so approachable as a Souls-like game that I would recommend this as somebody's first Souls-like game to try. You have your campfires as checkpoints, fast travel, and the ability to restore all your health and such, and as well as respawning all the enemies back into the world. But there's approachability. First of all, difficulty options. I don't think the lowest difficulty is quote unquote easy, but it is approachable for the majority of players out there. And checkpoints aren't far between each other and come regularly and pretty generous with where the locations are particularly in dungeons where you get one right before the boss or the dungeon challenge. The ability to matchmake co-op too feels seamless and can be a huge help in taking down anything you have struggled with. If you're really struggling with a boss, then you can just set your lobby to public and have people come in and help you out. I played on both Survivor and Veteran, and it felt like a balanced experience on both of them. One boss had a weird hitbox, which... I didn't think I was being hit, but I'd still be receiving damage, but outside of that experience, it was a good one. I'm a big fan often when there's Souls likes out there, there's only one difficulty option, but here, if you want a more casual experience to get a sense of this game's worlds, lore and gameplay, you can. If you want to experience the more punishing brutal challenge, you can. As far as I'm aware, Difficulty has no impact on loot rewards outside of like relic items, but that's not going to detract from anyone's experience. As with any good souls like, you need good, memorable bosses. Gunfire games did not disappoint. These are not only some of my favourite boss encounters this year, but some of the best I've seen in years. From both design to mechanics, they are extremely memorable as you try to take them down, try to learn from what they're going to do to hit you, and master them. What was also neat is that some of the sub bosses would become harder normal enemies for you to take out, really diversifying your combat experience. Sometimes it would mean you need to change up your approach, get up and personal with a shotgun like weapon, or go longer range with something like a pulse rifle or marksman weapon. Identify the crit spots, speaking of which they are huge in this game. Some bosses will have them protected so it's about unveiling them. Maybe by interacting with an environmental mechanic or straight up blowing off the armor that's protecting these crit spots. But yeah, listen, these boss designs, they rule. Specifically, the cube. That's all I'm going to say. No, no footage in this video, I just loved it. Really cool. Terrific amount of just enemy variation and a really fun and unique perspective on the Souls-like formula. 
I love it when a video game doesn't feel the need to reinvent the formula, but take what works and put their own unique spin on it. So I've covered the Destiny and Bloodborne parts of my simplification, but I also mentioned Control. The worlds that gunfire games have constructed here are just filled with intrigue. From what the enemies you are facing actually are, what the areas and biomes you are actually in. Remedy create weird worlds but in the best way. And I'm not really one to read dialogue or messages in games but I did here. And that's a testament to how these worlds are delivered to you as a player. On top of that, the boss weapons just feel like they'd fit right in the control or the encounters and designs. When you blend those three games together that I mentioned, it shouldn't fit, it just it shouldn't work, but it does. And it delivers an experience that you wouldn't have expected to receive. At a time where I'm being way more casual with the hours and time I spend in Destiny 2, Remnant 2 arrives at the perfect moment as a palate cleanser as to what the glue a shooter can be. That doesn't feel like a constant goose chase or waiting week for week for developments to happen. It might lack the long term progression, but I don't need to feel like I've got to give everything to a single video game and dedicate all my time to just one game. I want a satisfactory experience and the ability to move on, and Gunfire Games delivers that. What I respect most about this game is just what a complete package it is. We're living in the live service era of video games, where everything almost feels unfinished and unready for launch, whether that be in content, performance or the technical state of the game. Remnant 2 delivers on all of these fronts, minus a few PC performance issues that some people have, others don't, is a bit of a mixed bag. It feels rare that any kind of looter shooter arrives a complete package. Look, you can get the Ultimate Edition which comes with guaranteed DLC down the line, but it's not like you finish this game and feel short changed. Not to mention, this is not a full price video game, it's $41.99 here in the UK on Steam. In a year where I've seen Gollum released for 70 quid. The value proposition here is immense and fair value whether you just want to see the main path of the game or constantly re-roll your worlds till you get that ultimate min-max loadout that you want. Whether you spend 20 hours or 200, Remnant 2 is a surprise hit of 2023 for me and stands out in a year of just incredible video games that we keep getting served. I did not expect this one to land so well with me, to which I'll continue to keep playing and it will certainly be up there as one of 2023's standout games. If you enjoyed this video please consider hitting that like button, it helps me out massively and I'd really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on checking out Remnant 2 or if you're already playing, let me know what you think of it. If you enjoy talking all things video games and a big fan of looter shooters, you're in the right place because I'm probably going to be playing it. Go ahead and subscribe. I've got you covered. Have a terrific day and I'll catch you in the next one.